Yes, it's true. Our mother has seen hell. Purgatory. She has seen the judgment of souls. But where do I start? Perhaps one could say that everything started at sea, when she was still in her mother's womb, and her mother was returning from a pilgrimage to Ireland. There, God's hand was manifested. You were saved from death for the daughter you carry in your womb. Thus raise her in the love of God, since she was given to you by God. Bridget of Sweden, or Bridget of Vatsaina, is one of those women who, despite having lived several centuries ago, still has much to teach the church and the world. Much is known about the life of St. Bridget of Sweden. She is the most prominent one amongst the six patron saints of Europe. Bridget possessed an unusual spiritual skill being a mystic and a saint. The highlight of her achievements remain with the founding of the Order of the Most Holy Saviour, the Bridgetines, an order both for nuns and monks. The spiritual fathers of the church were so struck by her holy life that they immediately began working on her biography shortly after her death in 1373. Bridget or Brigida was born into a wealthy landowning family in 1303. She was the daughter of a wealthy gardener who used his riches generously. He donated money for good causes and helped the poor. He worked for the just and fair treatment of the people. Bridget learned these good lessons from her father in a very early life. From the time she was just a child, she was greatly devoted to the passion of Jesus. Bridget, courage. L let, let us rejoice and be glad and give him glory for the wedding day of the lamb has come his bride has made herself ready what does it mean mother who is the bride of the lamb it means that christ the lamb of god has married the church now read me more mother we have to go now bridget when she was only 10, it recorded that she had a vision of Jesus on the cross. She heard him say, Look at me, my daughter. Seeing his plentiful wounds, Bridget cried out, Who has treated you like this? Jesus answered, Those who despise me and refuse my love for them. From that moment on, Bridget tried to stop people from offending Jesus. In 1316, when she was just 14, her father compelled her to get married to an 18-year-old boy named Alfgar Mazen of the royal family of Ulwaza. While having a responsible and joyful family life, they both were blessed with eight children, four boys and four girls, of whom one was St. Catherine of Sweden. Bridget and Ulf also served the Swedish fort, Bridget as Queen's personal maid. Apart from these, they used to find sufficient time for doing good for the society, particularly for the Ostergodlins, unwed mothers and their children. It is said that they even arranged for a hospital on their own estate, which was kept open for all. On 
All through her life, Bridget had marvelous visions and received special messages from God. In obedience to these visions, she had visited many rulers and church officials, explaining humbly what exactly God expected of them. Your wife. Bridget, I'm sure your support won't fail. A throne stained by innocent blood can't be washed away by other blood. You are a righteous judge. But trust in the Lord for what you intend to do. He will know how to guide you. Little Magnus. Little Magnus, he is your cousin. A child king will without a doubt be better than a killer king. But the responsibility of whomever will be at his side will be that much greater. Eternal sweetness to those who love you. Joy surpassing all joy and all desire. Salvation and hope of all sinners who have proved that you have no greater desire than to be among men. Even assuming human nature at the fullness of time for the love of men. Recall all the sufferings you have endured from the instant of your conception and especially during your passion as it was decreed and ordained from all eternity in the divine plan. Remember, O oh Lord, that during the last supper with your disciples, having washed their feet, you gave them your most precious body and blood and while at the same time you did sweetly console them, you did foretell them your coming passion. On the sudden death of her husband in 1344, Bridget retired to a life of penance and prayer near Cistercian Monastery of Alvastro on Lake Wetter. She had put away her rich clothes and desired to live as a poor nun. Eventually, Bridget became a member of the Third Order of St. Francis and devoted herself to a life of prayer and caring for the poor and the sick. It was this time that she developed the idea of establishing a religious community for both men and women. The Order of the Most Holy Savior or the Brigitites. The members were required to live in poor convents and they were also required to give all of their surplus income to the poor. However, they were allowed to have as many books as they pleased. Something which we need to promote in the lives of the present youth who are addicted to mere mobile phones and to social media platforms. Later, King Magnus Eriksson donated a little palace and land for building a new monastery. But almost they had begun altering the palace and organizing the works, Christ appeared to her and asked her to go to Rome and wait there until she wrote the Pope to return from Avignon, France to Rome. Thus, in 1350, the Jubilee year, during the period of Avignon papacy, with unwavering confidence and faith in God's revelations, Bridget headed to Rome, accompanied by her daughter Catherine and few priests and nuns. This was partly done to obtain authorization to found the new order from the Pope. Those days between 1309 and 1376, popes lived in Avignon instead of Rome due to the conflict between the papacy and the French crown. Thus Bridget remained in Rome, writing several letters to the Pope and hoping one day he would return to Rome. 
In Rome, Brigitte chose to remain in Piazza Farnese, close to Campo di Fiori, where a small community of Brigitines always stood by her to assist her in all endeavors. And this house is now known as Casa di Santa Brigida. It was in this house she had spent the rest of her life receiving the divine visions and writing the revelations. Most pilgrims in Rome prefer to visit this chapel of St. Bridget and spend some time in prayer seeing the personal room and belongings of St. Bridget. One can see her relics preserved in this room. When Bridget had learned of an epidemic in Rome, she all the more decided to continue her stay in Rome to assist the sick and the dying. All through these years, she spoke out against the injustice being done there and worked toward to bring in good and harmonious life to all. She worked untiringly for the end of Avignon papacy. Her words and actions slowly began to influence the government and the church officials including the Pope. However, she had to wait for 20 long years for the return of the papacy from the French city of Avignon. Her most notable contributions have been highlighted as revelations. In these texts, Bridget recorded her visions of Jesus and Mary. These visions not only included the institution of the most holy order of monastic life, but also the questions of theology and morality. They also include vivid visions of the birth and death of Jesus. Saint Bridget prayed for a long time to know how many blows Jesus Christ suffered during his terrible passion. Rewarding her patience, one day he appeared to her and said, I received 5,480 blows upon my body. If you wish to honor them in some way, recite 15 Our Fathers and 15 Hail Marys with the following prayers, which I myself shall teach you for an entire year. When the year is finished, you will have honored each of my oaths. Later, these prayers came to be known as the 15 O's because in the original Latin, each prayer began with the words O Jesu, O Rex or O Domine Jesu Christi. It was in 1370 that Pope Urban V, during his brief attempt to re-establish the papacy in Rome, confirmed the rule of the Brigitine order. During this long period of waiting, Bridget and her disciples had made themselves universally beloved in Rome by their kindness and good works. In the year 1372, she was spurred by a vision to visit the Holy Land. And during this pilgrimage, she was privileged to see the places where Jesus was born, walked, taught, died and rose from the dead. All throughout this Holy Land pilgrimage, she experienced Christ's presence in clear visions. But soon she had returned to Rome only to say goodbye to her earthly life. Yes, she breathed her last on July 23rd in the year 1373. Bridget left the church influenced in several ways. Her daughter Catherine and her granddaughter Ingigerd went on further to establish and enhance the Bridgeton order of nuns. Revelations were spread throughout the church and had several key impacts. Those became the basis and inspiration for the rise and flourishing of various Christian arts like poetry and iconic paintings. It also opened up the ways for various creative and pious devotion to Blessed Virgin Mary. Moreover, her letters eventually helped the papacy to leave Avignon and to re-establish in Rome itself. Speaking of her prophecies, she even had predicted an eventual Vatican state foretelling almost the exact boundaries delineated by Mussolini for Vatican City in 1921. Though with the enthusiasm of Catherine, the Brigitine order had flourished in various parts of Europe and elsewhere. In due course of time, the order had to face lots of identity crises and remain shepherdless for so many years. It took few centuries to revive and recanonize the order. A Lutheran girl named Elizabeth Hasselblad, during her visit to Italy and Rome, accidentally happened to notice the chapel of St. Bridget, Casa di Brigida. The house! The house is St. Brigida!
you, daughter of Saint Brigitta. I need you. It is here that you must work. There began a new era, the total rejuvenation for the Brigitines who were scattered around the world. Elizabeth received Catholic baptism, strider burst, irrespective of suffering from intestinal hemorrhage, for the revival and re-establishment of Brigitte order, and it was fully approved by the Holy See on 7th July 1940. Just like her spiritual mentor and icon Saint Bridget, Elizabeth too owned the hearts of many in the Holy City of Rome, and people title her as the Extraordinary Woman of Rome. In the year 2016, Pope Francis canonized and elevated Blessed Elizabeth Hazelblood into the status of saints. Today, around the world, Bridgetines are having a splendid identity due to their constant devotion to the Blessed Sacrament adoration. The Mother House of the Order is located on Piazza Furnace, Rome, the house where Bridget had lived. For some, St. Bridget might be the patron of failures. But anyone who comes closer and closer to her uncompromising and virtuous life will know for sure that she was a successful failure. And this fact gets double confirmation with her canonization in the year 1391 by Pope Boniface IX. And it was confirmed by the Council of Constance in 1415. Bridget, you were a woman of peace. You brought harmony where there was conflict. You brought light to the darkness. You brought hope to the downcast. May the mantle of your peace cover those who are troubled and anxious and make peace be firmly rooted in our hearts and in our world. Inspire us to act justly and care for all God's creation. Bridget, you wear a voice for the wounded and the weary. Strengthen what is weak within us. Call us into the quietness that which heals and consoles. May we grow each day into a greater wholeness in mind, body and in spirit. Amen. <laughs>